And in this section, we're going to look at uh, double and half angle formulas. The first thing we're going to do is find sine of, so we're going to find sine of 2 theta by writing 2 theta as theta plus theta. And now we're going to use the sum formula for sine that we saw yesterday. So if you got your notes out, you can look up there. If not, hopefully I'll remember it correctly. So sine theta plus theta is sine theta cos theta plus cos theta sine theta. So both A and B are theta here. What can I do to simplify this a little bit? Are these terms the same? Yes. Yep, so there's two of them. So we're just going to write it as 2 sine theta cos theta. So there's our first double angle identity. Sine 2 theta equals 2 sine theta cos theta. And we're going to do the same thing for cosine. So cos of theta plus theta is cos theta cos theta minus sine theta sine theta. So same, similar formula, except A and B are both thetas now. And how can I rewrite cos theta, cos theta? So this would be two cos theta if they were added together. So this will be cos squared theta, or cosine theta squared. And same thing, sine times sine. That's sine squared theta. So here is one version of the double angle formula for cos 2 theta. We can also pretty easily turn cosine squared into something with a sine squared. So I'm going to write that identity that down that we're going to use. So we know that cos squared plus sine squared equals 1. So if I solve for cos squared theta, I have 1 minus sine squared theta. And likewise, if I solve for sine squared theta, I get 1 minus cosine squared. So the first, the first substitution I'm going to make, I'm going to take out cos squared and replace it with 1 minus sine squared minus sine squared. So we get 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. Any algebra questions on that substitution? And now we're going to do a similar thing, but substitute the other the other trig function. So I'm going to write the original cos squared minus sine squared. So now I'm going to take out sine squared very carefully. And instead of sine squared, I'm going to write 1 minus cos squared. And that would not be the right way to do it. What do I need to do when I unsubstitute sine squared in for that? So I need to group it up. So we need to subtract the whole thing. So we got cosine plus cosine. So we got 2 cos squared theta. minus 1.
So all three of these are on the formula page as well. You don't need to remember the alternative forms here. And we're ready for our first example problem. So if sine theta equals 3 fifths, and theta is between pi over 2 and pi, so I want to find sine of 2 theta. and cos 2 theta. So might as well go for cos 2 theta first because it's right on the screen there. Which of the three versions of cos 2 theta should I use? So let's just take the first version. So that's cos squared minus sine squared. Which value do I actually know? Do I know cos theta or sine theta in our example? So I know sine theta. So unfortunately, I have to do a little work to figure out cos theta. So what I'm going to do instead is use a version that only has sine in it. So we'll just use the second version right there. So the second version is a 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. And sine theta is 3 fifths. So we're going to get 3 fifths squared. And we just have to simplify this down. So we have 9 25ths times 2 is 18 25ths. And we want to add fractions. And fractions suck unless we're in common denominator. Then they're easy. So we should get 7 25ths. So any questions getting the cos 2 theta? before we move on to try to figure out sine 2 theta. <clears throat> so for sine 2 theta, we only have one choice. It's that one. 2 sine theta cos theta. So I know sine theta is 3 fifths. But I need to figure out what in the world's cosine theta. So I need to get cosine theta, and there's really no way around it. I don't have another uh, alternative form to use. So I need to find cosine theta. So we know what sine theta is. How do we use that information to figure out cosine theta? So we had this problem one or two sections back. So there's two ways to do it. I could uh, use algebra, which is cos squared plus sine squared equals 1. That's one way to get it. Or I can use a build a triangle with the correct sides in it. So I'm going to go with the triangle route because it is a, a better, it solves more types of problems. You can go the algebra route. But the triangle is uh, applicable in more situations, so I'm going to go with a triangle more often. Most students prefer a triangle method as well. So when we build our triangle, we're going to need to draw it in the correct quadrant. The correct quadrant is not quadrant 1. What quadrant does theta live in? So theta is between pi over 2 and pi. Two. So that puts it right in quadrant 2. So it's bigger than pi over 2, but not quite as big as pi. So we draw our angle. It's going to be somewhere in quadrant 2. I don't know exactly where, so I'm just going to draw it right in the middle of quadrant 2. And when we draw our triangle, it's going to look like this. We're always drawing it down to the x-axis. So we're in quadrant 2, going 
into the x-axis. So now I'll draw a much bigger version of the triangle right here. There's our angle. And we're going to use Sokotoa. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. If you forget Sokotoa, uh, just remember sine is the y value. So it's going to correspond to the vertical side, as long as you drew your triangle correctly. <clears throat> so opposite is going to be 3. And hypotenuse is going to be 5. So we have a 3 and a 5. How do I get the f other side, the third side? So we'll go Pythagorean Theorem. You can use whatever letter you want. I'll go for x because it's the horizontal side or the x side. So we got x squared plus 3 squared equals 5 squared. So subtract 3 squared, so 25 minus 9 is 16. And what did I forget in my algebra? I threw away a solution if I leave it like this. Could be positive or could be negative square root. So I don't know if it's 4 or negative 4. This is where the quadrant comes in to play. So the quadrant, the fact that we're in quadrant 2, I have a negative x value. And that's very important. So the x coordinate is going to be negative here. So we're choosing the negative 4 for the, well, we're not really choosing, but we're. We have to go with a negative 4 for the horizontal side. And now we can answer what is cosine theta. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So the adjacent side is negative 4. The hypotenuse is 5. So we have negative 4 fifths. So any questions on getting Post data here using Sokotoa. And we've, that is cosine theta. So we're going to take that negative four fifths and put that value in. And just multiplying all these together, we're going to get negative 25 in the denominator. 24 25ths. So that was a lot of work just to get cosine. double angle we're going to go for is tangent. So on this we're going to use the formula for tangent a plus b. So this is going to be a fraction is tangent a plus tangent b divided by 1 minus tan A tan B. And we can simplify this down. So in the numerator we got tangent theta plus tangent theta which is 2 tan theta. In the denominator we have tangent times tangent and that's tangent squared theta. So I want to warn you about notation. So 
So this is what I call an ambiguous exponent or coefficient. So is that 2 meant to be a tangent squared of theta? Or is that 2 meant to be multiplied by theta before I take tangent? So this is an ambiguous 2. It's a little bit big for an exponent and a little bit uh, not lifted up high enough, but it's not really looking quite like a coefficient either. So if you want to uh, eliminate this ambiguity, I recommend you either write very clearly your exponent. So write your exponent a little smaller and higher than you normally might. Uh, or if you, if you mean it to be a coefficient, you can always use an extra parenthesis right there. So this is what I call lazy exponent or coefficient. So if you're writing an exponent, make sure it's extra small and raised up enough. And if you're writing a coefficient, make sure that it appears almost the exact same height as whatever is next to it. So it's especially going to come into play with these double angle formulas. So the next thing we're going to do when we're making, uh, creating all these identities, we're going to solve for sine squared theta. Well, let's write down what the original equation. So we're going to use the cos 2 theta equals 1 minus 2 sine squared theta and solve for sine squared theta. So the first thing we'll do is subtract 1 and then multiply by negative 1 half. And then distribute that negative 1 half. So we're going to have 1 minus cos 2 theta over 2. So we just solved the first sine squared here. Now if I want to solve a regular sine, we're going to get square root both sides. Now these two equations are almost the same exact thing. They're just in slightly different forms. The one on the right is just the square root of the one on the left. Now we're going to use the other identity for cos 2 theta, which is 2 cos squared theta minus 1. And we're going to solve for cos squared theta. So add 1 to both sides. And then divide by 2.
So there's our identity for cos squared theta. And now we're gonna square root both sides. So we got regular cos theta equals plus or minus square root one plus cos two theta over two. So now we need to do the same thing. We just got a formula for taking sine squared or cos squared and reducing the power. Now we're gonna look for one to take tangent squared and reduce the power. And the way we're gonna figure this one for tangent squared we're gonna write tangent squared theta as sine squared theta over cos squared theta. And then individually on sine squared and cos squared use these identities that we just got right there. So in the numerator, we're gonna get a fraction which is one minus cos two theta over two. And the denominator, we get one plus cos two theta over two. So from here, we have a fraction of fractions, so we could, or multi-story fractions, so we can multiply by the reciprocal. And it's gonna be a little bit quicker. Instead of doing that, I'm gonna multiply by two over two. So that's the same as multiplying by one. That's not gonna change anything. The two in the numerator is gonna be multiplied in the numerator fraction, and that's multiplied in the denominator fraction. It's gonna cancel the one halves and get us down to one minus cos two theta over one plus cos two theta. And we could do the same thing we did before, which is square root both sides. So tangent theta equals plus or minus square root one minus cos two theta divided by one plus cos two theta. So using these, what we're gonna do is reduce cos to the four theta to single powers of cosine. So cos to the fourth theta, this is cosine theta to the fourth power, which we could write as cos squared squared. And really fast algebra reminder, a to the b to the c power. So powers of powers are products. So a to the b to the c power is a to the b times c power. So I want to reduce cos to the fourth down to single powers of cosine. <coughs> so cosine squared, I have a f reduction formula for that. I'm going to scroll up to this cos squared identity. So cos squared is one plus cos two theta over two. So that's cos squared.
So we're still, when we uh, apply this power, we're still going to have uh, a co-squared term. So let's distribute this power across the fraction. So squaring the fraction is the same as squaring numerator, squaring denominator. Squaring denominator is easy, that's just 4. What do I have to do to square the numerator? Foil. Foil. So that's my second favorite F word. Factor is the best one. Foiling is pretty good. So we're going to foil the top. So we get 1 times 1 is 1. We get an outside inside term and inside outside term that are the same. They're both going to be cos 2 theta. So we get 2 cos 2 theta plus cos 2 theta squared. I'm going to write that as cos squared 2 theta. So any FOIL questions before we move on? So the last thing we need to do is get rid of that square power. And we're going to use the same power reduction formula we just used. So I'm going to write that down again. Cos squared theta equals 1 plus cos 2 theta over 2. That's a good example of an almost ambiguous coefficient in front of theta. It should be written a little bit lower. All right, the only difference is I don't have theta. I have 2 theta. So what I'm going to do is replace theta by 2 theta. And we got 2 times 2 theta, which is 4 theta. So cos squared of 2 theta is 1 plus cos 4 theta over 2. So I'm going to make that substitution now. And we're finally down to single powers of cosine here. We got a fraction of fractions, so we could reduce this some more, but that's good enough uh, for now. actually going to run back a little bit our notes and make some variable changes up here. And we'll start up at where we did when we got sine theta equals plus or minus square root. So under this, what we're going to do is we're going to replace, and actually I'm going to take this box off of this. I'm gonna, the second version we write down, I'm going to put a box around that one. So I'm going to replace theta with alpha over 2. And that means where I see 2 theta, that'll just be alpha. So I'm going to replace theta with alpha over 2. And then, where, of course, that means when I see 2 theta, I'm going to replace by just alpha. So we have sine alpha over 2 equals plus or minus square root 1 minus cos alpha all over 2. And this version is the one that we're going to use on the formula page. We're going to do the exact same swap down for cosine at the bottom of the screen. So we're just changing the names of the variables. So on the left, we get cosine alpha over 2. And on the right, 
plus or minus square root one plus cos alpha all divided by two. And last up, we're gonna do the same thing for tangent. So down we have tangent right here. So where I see theta, we're gonna have alpha over two. Plus or minus square root. So one minus cos alpha divided by one plus cos alpha. So we're gonna use these formulas right here to answer the next few questions. So we found uh, either one of the trig functions for pi over 12 using the difference formula. So we saw, I think, pi over 3 minus pi over 4 is pi over 12. So in this case, it would be pi over 4 minus pi over 3 is negative pi over 12. So that would be one way to solve this. Uh, what I want to do instead is use the half angle formula. So first thing to notice is negative pi over 12, if I double that angle, I'll have negative pi over 6, and that's the angle I know about. So this is half of an angle that I'm familiar with. So the way we're going to uh, turn this around, we're going to let alpha over 2 equal negative pi over 12. And I'm using the sine alpha over 2 that we just wrote down equals plus or minus one minus cos alpha over two. So I'm using this formula we just wrote down. So alpha over two equals negative pi over 12. So regular alpha is negative pi over six. So we got sine negative pi over 12 is going to be plus or minus square root one minus cos alpha, which is negative pi over six. So what is cos, and cosine is even, so it doesn't care about that negative in front of the pi over six. So I'm just using the even property of cosine here. And what is cosine pi over six? Cosine pi over six, root three over two. So there's only one last thing we need to do, and that's decide do we want plus or do we want minus? So that double angle formula doesn't narrow it down any more than this. So the way we figure out plus and minus, it all depends on what quadrant should our original trig, uh, our original angle be in. So it's definitely going to be in quadrant 4. Negative pi over 12 is a very small negative angle. So it's going to be right there in quadrant 4. So are we expecting sine to be positive or negative down here? 
Sine should be negative. Cos should be positive, but sine should be negative. So we're going to choose the negative, and we have this negative square root. questions on figuring this one out. So we're going to do one more question that's really similar. So have we seen any pi over 8's before? Not even in the difference did we see pi over 8. So there's no real way to get pi over 8 from adding two angles we know about. The only way we can get to pi over 8 is basically half of a pi over 4 angle. So same first step, let alpha over 2 equal 3 pi over 8. So regular alpha is 3 pi over 4. And now we're going to use the tangent alpha over 2 equals plus minus square root 1 minus cos alpha over 1 plus cos alpha. So let's go ahead and figure out should this be plus or minus before we move on. What quadrant is 3 pi over 8 in? All right, so let's say that you don't know what quadrant 3 pi over 8 is in. Probably because 8s are a weird denominator. So we got 8 pi over 8, 4 pi over 8. And now it should be really obvious where 3 pi over 8 is. So 3 pi over 8 is going to be close to 4 pi over 8, somewhere right around there. So there's our 3 pi over 8. So everybody's positive in quadrant 1. So no matter what trig function, we're going to choose the positive version. So our tangent is going to be the positive square root 1 minus cos. Now our alpha is 3 pi over 4 divided by 1 plus cos 3 pi over 4. And now figure out what these two function values are, the cos 3 pi over 4. So I recommend when you get down to here that you don't bother simplifying anymore because you're very likely to make a mistake. Well, you may be very good at algebra, but overall uh, these get a little tricky and it's more likely to make a mistake on these type of uh, reductions. If you really want to reduce everything, I recommend use common denominator so you can add the fractions up first. So not recommended to reduce. But if you insist, so we're going to have square root 2 
plus one over square root two, and square root two minus one over square root two. So there's some common denominator adding together. And multiply by square root two over square root two. So there's the least painful way to reduce, right there. But you're still going to have a square root of a fraction with square roots inside of it. So it doesn't get too much better. So there is a way to get to these values with geometry, but it's kind of a pain. So we got to it using uh, the double half angle formulas. We have only one more example in this section. And we'll be able to get at least part way through it. So if cos alpha equals negative 3 fifths, alpha is between pi and 3 pi over 2. the exact values of sine alpha over 2, cosine alpha over 2, and tangent alpha over 2. So just using the cheat sheet or the formula page, I know that these are all going to be the plus minus square roots. So sine is 1 minus cos alpha over 2. Cosine is 1 plus cos alpha over 2. And tangent is 1 minus cos alpha over 1 plus cos alpha. So there's not too much going on here. The only thing you really have to do is pick plus or minus on all these. And that's a little bit easier said than done. I know what quadrant alpha is in. What I have to figure out is what quadrant is alpha over 2 in. So how do I take this inequality with alpha and solve for alpha over 2? What do I multiply this by to get alpha over 2 in the middle? One half, that's it. So I want to get alpha over two, so I'm just going to multiply the whole thing by a half. It's positive a half, so I don't flip my inequalities around. So now we're between pi over two and three pi over four. What quadrant is alpha over two in? So we're definitely bigger than pi over 2. So that put, puts us in quadrant 2. We're smaller than 3 pi over 4. So we're in the first part of the second quadrant. So there's pi over 2. We're less than 3 pi over 4. So we're somewhere in between those two angles there. So which one of these is going to be negative? Sine or cosine? Cosine is negative. Sine is positive. What does that mean about tangent? Tangent is going to be negative because it's going to be y over x. So one of them is negative, making the tangent negative. And all you do is put in 3 fifths everywhere you see cosine. So that's all there is to do for this problem.